Hey everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today, we're gonna to be doing an MSD81 upgrade on my 2008 BMW 335i. Unfortunately, my car came right before the cutoff for the 335s to get the MSD81, and it came with the MSD80 that we tried to fix by replacing the MOSFETs, but unfortunately, that didn't work. I'm not sure why, and I wanna find out eventually. But today, we're gonna to be doing the much more reliable upgrade, which is the MSD81. SD 81 DME. This thing we got used for a great deal and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we did that. And we're gonna be reprogramming it to work with RN54 plug and play. And I'm gonna break down the exact steps so that you can follow this procedure at home. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to drop a like down below and let's get straight to work. So let's start off with the basics. I've already skipped a few steps and I've removed my DME from the car, which is pretty simple. It's in the engine bay. And then we also removed the CAS module, CAS module. And this is the car's access system module. It controls the key and helps pair it to the DME in order to start the car and basically has like the security functions and stuff like that loaded in there. So I'm gonna show you guys, this is the DME that I bought from a junkyard. And I was able to source this using a website called car-park.com. It's actually what looks to be a website that you would probably use if you were like a dealership or a used car dealer, you're trying to rebuild cars and get car parts from the junkyard and you don't wanna pull them yourself. Well, this is a great way for private junkyards to put their parts for sale on a marketplace and then basically they can sell them and you can see where junkyards are that have the part off of the car that you need. So I sourced an MSD81 DME from a 2010 535i, that's right from an E60 5 Series. The car has the exact same motor and because the car was made after the 2008 uh, March production month, it has the new upgraded DME. The MSD81 is known to have more software features as well as better injector MOSFETs in order to help with the spark and the injector and all that internal stuff. So we're gonna be doing this upgrade by cloning this DME into this one, overriding all of the E60 programming and adding our three series automatic programming. And all that we should have to do is plug and play into the car and we'll have it running in no time. Now this level of programming is not something that you can do at home because it requires a special level of equipment as well as expertise in getting the security codes off of this DME and into the new one as well as all the programming features and the vehicle order and VIN and all that sort of stuff. So I reached out to a local specialist, Remote Beamer Coding, and I'll put a link to them in the description below. They offer tons of BMW programming and coding services like the MSD80 to 81 upgrade, as well as F chassis NBT retrofits and getting your car to have an iDrive upgrade on it. And so they were the best people for us to go to to have this procedure done. They only charge $250 to clone the DMEs, but if you mention that you watched our channel's video, then you'll get $25 off making it $225 in order to get your DMEs cloned from one to the other. Just remember, you need the CAS module and the key, just like I had shown you previously but we're gonna go ahead and bring all these items to him and he's gonna be able to transfer everything and give it back to us as a finished product. So let's go ahead and pack all this together and in a couple days time, we'll have this thing back and we'll have our car ready to start. Eventually. All right, it's a couple days later and the service has been completed. We should be able to start our car using our new MSD81 with our old key and our old cast. All we have to do is install this stuff inside of the car now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys where the DME goes, that's a pretty easy one. And then we'll show you where the CAS goes, which is a pretty difficult spot to record, but I'm gonna show you guys as best as possible in case you're doing this procedure at home. So here underneath the steering wheel, it's gonna be really hard to see, but directly up here, there is one 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the CAS module from this corner right here. So it's gonna be on this side of the car, but you remove that bolt and it's able to come down and out. And then there's two connectors to slide off. So I'm gonna try to show you guys as best as I can all that, but uh, bear with me, we'll install this and then install the DME.
All right, so we've got the battery connected and we can go ahead and install our key now. And everything is connected, the DME and the CAS module. I'm gonna go ahead and put the key at position two. I do have to program my injectors. And so that was my fault because I didn't give the codes over to Junior at Beamer Remote Coding. But we're gonna do that now with my laptop and then we'll do a first start and we'll be able to check the codes with IMPA and see and hopefully there's nothing wrong. So let me code these injectors really quick and then we'll get to starting the car. A lot of boring math later. All right, so that should be all of our injectors correctly coded. Uh, they're a mix of 05 and 07s. Honestly, I would love to upgrade to the Index 12s, but for now, we're gonna leave them as is, and then we'll be able to start the car. So wish me luck, everyone watching from behind your computers and your phones and all that, because we're about to start this thing, and hopefully it runs on all the cylinders. Three, two, one. All right, it was definitely misfiring there. Let's go ahead and check the codes out. Uh, seemed like it was running on more, more cylinders though, so I think we made some progress. Let's see what's going on. All right, so as far as the codes, it looks like we have a coding fault. That's probably from us just installing it now. We need to delete that. And then we've got a cylinder three and a four misfire. Uh, before we had completely one bank that was down, so five and six weren't working, but now they clearly are. I wonder if it'll go away if we try starting it again or if it's gonna continue. Let's go ahead and for now, let's clear the memory read it out. It still gives us a coding fault. So I need to look that up and see what it could be. It might be something that I need to code on my end, but I think I'll reach out to Junior and he'll tell me what the deal is. For now, it does start. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. Well, she's running better. That's for sure. I think we just have cylinder three and four that are misfiring. I, I'm pretty sure that cylinder three is a bad injector. I didn't know that cylinder four was as well, but we might have to replace both of them. Now reading the codes again, and I apologize for my dirty screen, looks like cylinder three misfire. So that's something that we need to look into. I'm almost 100% sure that it's the injector that's dead because we moved it from bank two to bank one. And I'm pretty sure that's the one that caused our DME MOSFET to fail. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and order a whole new set of injectors for sure, actually probably today and I'll make a video about installing those as well. But for now, we've got the car started, we need to look into the coating air, and we need to pull it in the garage because we wanna do a full inspection on it as well, and I can't wait to do that. So to remove this annoying coating fault, all we're gonna have to do is open up NCS Expert, and that should allow us to code the DME, and it's gonna use the factory vehicle order settings to write all the options to the DME, and then we should have the car running perfect. So I'll just start up the software here. We're gonna select E89, which is for the E90 for the three series chassis. We're gonna read the CAS to get the DME and all that info. And then we're gonna click back. We're gonna click process ECU. And now we're gonna recode the DME, which is the module 62 BMO right here. And you see the option SG code Irwin, which means coding right. And we're gonna go ahead and execute that job. And we should have that code go away. Coding ended. Go ahead and back to main. And we'll close NCS Expert, open up INPA, and then do a code check and see what we got. All right. We'll go ahead and clear the codes now. And there we are. No fault codes, no errors. Our dash is on, just refreshed as well. So no coding faults once we've installed our DME. It's 100% made it to the car now, and all we have to worry about are those misfire codes, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be solved once we do the spark plugs and the injectors. 
So to recap, we have finally fixed our DME Bank 2 fault by just completely replacing the DME with an MSD81 unit. This is the upgraded DME for all N54s that BMW produced from 2008 of March and forward, and it's able to handle higher current through its board, and for that reason, it's not going to kill an entire bank of cylinders when you get a misfire. So this is a great upgrade, and shout out to Remote Beamer Coding for helping us clone these DMEs, and for the promotion that they're gonna give to all of you viewers right now, remember to mention the Beamer Barn when you go to their website, and that way they'll give you $25 off this cloning service. And I'm so excited to get the car moving. Uh, I wanna get it in the garage next, stay tuned for our our next episode because we're gonna be doing a full inspection we're gonna find out what's underneath that aftermarket bumper as well as what the car looks like from the underside which will really tell us the story of how this car was maintained so I hope you guys enjoyed the video for today be sure to drop a like down below and comment what you think of the MSD 81 upgrade I might want to look into the MSD 80 that we still have and see if we can figure out why this thing was misfiring to begin with but subscribe to the channel if you're new and you have yet and as always, I hope everyone has an awesome day. We will see you next time.